Hello, welcome to the Joe Cortez Show here in Las Vegas, Nevada, the boxing capital of the world. Of course, you guys know that I've always been involved in the community, doing different things and helping out with the boxing, especially with the kids. And just in, in general, my, my makeup is helping people all the time, just get them on the right track. And I, it's time for younger folks to get out there and get moving, just like they helped me when I was coming up the ranks. And that's what I'm doing these days. I'm helping these young folks that I like my guest today, Jason Vincent, Jason Vegas Vincent, <laughs> who's uh, involved in the community. He's an amateur boxing uh, judge and referee. And hopefully one day in the near future, we'll get him into the professional ranks where he belongs, young talent and knows what he's doing. And of course, you know, you people out there have to know that we are always involved, Vincent and I, in the community, helping these young folks. He has a beautiful family, beautiful uh, son and daughter, and wonderful wife. And it, it, the thing is about family, family is so important. And that's why I said boxing is good, it was good for me. I come from a single parent home and um, it was not the same as when you have a, a family, you know, mother, father, and everybody grows up together. Sometimes we have a little tougher time growing up. I know I did growing up, so, but boxing got me on the right track. Yeah, I made sure that I didn't go the wrong way, and the great Gaspar Indian Ortega, who was my mentor, one of the great fighters. Gaspar Ortega, uh, Vincent, uh, I want to tell you that Gaspar Ortega had 176 professional fights. That's unbelievable. But, but before we start this show again, I want to welcome you once again on the show so we can talk about what's going on in your neck of the woods with the amateur boxing and what's coming up in the near future. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But uh, talking about the community and what you've been doing with these young kids, you tell us a little bit about what's going on in your life. Um, well, in my life, man, I'm uh, just uh, really involved in the uh, amateur boxing community here and abroad, uh, regionally and nationally. And here, uh, you know, we had that spike in COVID this winter, right. obviously, you know, and, and you know all about that with uh, your, your issues with COVID in the past. But uh, we're now kind of, um, I don't want to say we're out of the woods, but we are now starting to have uh, amateur events for 2022 here in Las Vegas. So we have a lot of events coming up. We have a lot of activity coming up. We'll talk about what we have coming up, but uh, I've been getting into these gyms and the kids are training hard. The, the coaches are in there with them. Um, the community's starting to come together and we're really uh, excited and ready to get amateur boxing going for 2022 here in uh, the, the fight capital of the world, uh, Las Vegas, Nevada. Well, you know, Vincent, you know, we're going, you see, talking about you're helping these kids out in the community, the gyms, got them active. When, with this COVID situation, can you tell our parents out there that are watching and these youngsters, what is the best way out for them to get with this COVID situation? This pandemic has been hurting everybody, especially these young folks. I've not experienced that. They've been held back from going out, mingling with their friends, not going to school. How do you, how do, you do that with your family? Well, you know, it's tough. I'm going to be honest with you and, and, and not to be political or anything, but uh, myself, uh, my wife, obviously we were fully vaccinated and had our booster shots. We both work in the casino. She works at the Wynn Hotel. I work at Caesars Palace. And then my son's a uh, senior. He's graduating this year from Palo Verde High, uh, High School. He had his two shots. And then my daughter's nine. She's so getting ready to turn 10 years old. And we were just waiting for those to become available. And when they did come available a few months back, we went ahead and got her vaccinated. Um, obviously, we, we wore our masks uh, where we were supposed to wear our masks. Uh, they've loosened those up. So I'll be honest, it's nice to take the mask off and, and, and see everybody's faces again. But, uh, you know, we just try to stay uh, healthy. I don't want to sound like a sermon here, but, you know, eat our fruits and vegetables and take our vitamins and wash our hands and sanitize and where we can social distance, we try to, sure. but it's a risk. You know, it's a risk just, you know, anywhere you go nowadays, but we are fully vaccinated. So I do feel comfortable with my family traveling and going to events or going out to eat at a restaurant or my daughter does dance and drama kids at her school. And my son has his activities. He do. I do as a parent, I can sleep a little bit better at night and have a little more comfort and ease knowing that my family is vaccinated. Okay, good. But, you know, the thing is, is there's a lot of folks out there, they're vaccinated. But again, you know, they're, they're going through some difficult times because this is all new to these young folks. Yeah. They have, they, 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 they get depressed and feel that their anxiety and all of this, you know, and there's a lot of individuals that we have to uh, 
talk more about later on at a different day. I want to bring in some of these experts when it comes to mental, uh, you know, mental illness. Correct. There's a lot of ind individuals. I mean, we got to look at a lot of suicides out there. Going to the numbers are going through the roof these Absolutely. days. Absolutely. And it's all because of this COVID and people can't deal with certain things. The crimes are going up. And that's one thing is that so many crimes that are going up there, the, the car theft and the carjacking, the uh, drugs, uh, you know, bread. Assaults and batteries, yeah, assaults yeah, and batteries. yeah bully, I mean, bullying, yeah, you know, they, all that. Uh, yeah. A lot of stuff is kicking in now more than ever. I don't know if our government, and I, I don't want to talk politics because I hate politics, but we have to see what our government can do to help these people get them on the right track. Because there's more, everything is spiking up more than ever. It couldn't be with the pandemic, with the COVID. I don't know what it is, but there's something that's got to, we need some changes. Yeah, you know, uh, listen up. I mean, obviously I'm a volunteer with USA Boxing as an official a coach. I'm a master boxer myself. I, I've gotten in the ring and box and I was on the board of directors athlete representative, but also I'm a dad and a father and a husband, but also I've worked at my daughter's school and my son's school for five years now. So I work for the school district security and, and morning and afternoon safe key to, uh, to mentor the kids and guide them. I'm Mr. Jason over there and they absolutely adore me and, and I adore them. And we adore you here too. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate you, right? You asked me back, so I, might, I must be doing something right, but very grateful. But the point being is I see these kids day in and day out. And yes, we have to keep them safe and we have to lower their risks. And, and, and I don't want to, like I say, tell anybody what to do, but yes, vaccination is one step, mask wearing is one step, but I wanna get these masks off and I wanna get these kids outside and playing because we have them inside the building and, and we're not able to take them outside in the morning. They do now, I heard they do now once the mask mandate drop, but these kids are going stir crazy. Um, they have all sorts of uh, emotional um, little flare ups and meltdowns while I'm at the school, um, a lot of them have lost a year or two of not only schooling, you know, everything that goes with schooling, reading, writing, math, arithmetic, all that, but they social skills are behind like two years now. Yeah, exactly. So we're trying to catch them up and work with them, but it's like an uphill climb and battle. And that's where, it, you know, obviously we're talking boxing and I'm going to be an advocate for, for, for boxing in the community, amateur boxing in the community. But that's where we got to start now, especially with the weather getting warmer. I know it's going to be almost 80 degrees this week. We got to start getting these kids outside, even if you just take them to the park or you get them in soccer or baseball or football or dance or, 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 or jujitsu or preferably boxing with us. And we got to let them go out there and, and empty their gas tanks and burn a little steam off, just like we do as adults, and not just kids, adults too. You need to get out of the house and, and burn some aggression off and hit yeah. the gym, hit the heavy bag, go yeah. wherever. Exactly. You got to let that frustration out somewhere. Absolutely. Don't let it out on, on, your, on your loved ones or your children. Get a, hit, hit the bag. <laughs> That's put, a, put a face on the bag and punch <laughs> that heavy bag and maybe leave somebody. I hit the bag five days maybe, a week. Maybe so. somebody that you don't like, you punch on the bag. Yeah, yeah. When you let out your frustration, it really works a lot. It does. It really makes you feel better. I mean, I still do it these days. Of course. I have to get on the bag, hit the bag. But uh, at my young age, I, I still, it's only a number for me. You know that. I'm always going. I can't stop. But I feel like uh, that you guys out there got to take care of our kids because the kids right now in the community, like you say, you're helping out there. I'm helping as well, and you out there with your beautiful family, keeping them on the right track, keeping these kids growing up the right way, you know, and uh, we got to be more together, the families, the community, or we got to be a little closer, call one another a little bit more often, because what's happening is there's not enough, there's too much separation between friends and family members. Yeah. We got to keep that family together. And that's one of the side effects. And, and, you know, once COVID passes, or I guess in a review mirror, I, we might be living with COVID our whole lives, but whatever happens is when they start doing studying studies on all the different repercussions of COVID and they go to that, you know, a lot of that isolation and separation as humans were not meant to have. And it was a detriment and it was a downfall for, for society for this short, you know, period of time right here. And we got to do things to correct the course and get back on track. And I think a lot of it is, like you said, families come together, communities come together, together the best that you can. Right. We need all the adults in the room to put their heads together and work through this and take care of our kids and our young ones and, and set an example and, and, and let's move into the future here. Exactly. You know, one of the things I've noticed is that a lot of people have that anger. You gotta let that anger go, you know? Like if you see you're getting into a little 
dispute with something, you know, just you know, just walk away from it because being angry and, and arguing back and forth can make matters worse. Absolutely. It doesn't make it any better. I always believe in being kind and loving, and, and even if I'm wrong, I'll admit I made many mistakes. We all do it, but you know what? I I don't want to argue about it. I said, you know what? Forgive me if I made some mistakes. I'm only human, and uh, you learn from your mistakes. But you try to move on and be better. I think that uh, that we're doing pretty good. COVID seems to be easing off a little bit, and I think that I can see people relaxing a little bit more. Yeah. And now what's happening now is the news you see every day now, what's happening with Russia yeah. and Ukraine. It's so sad because uh, what's happening there, I mean, last night they, 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 they targeted some uh, um, some juvenile uh, homes that they were. There was these uh, home care facilities for kids, and they bombed, they killed all those kids last night, two different locations. That's you know, horrible. And, and uh, they were, I hate to see that because this, we love children. We love people from all walks of life. And you know, once you get into boxing like we have, you get to meet people from all over the world. I've been to China. I've been to... to uh, South Korea, not good enough, but I've been, <laughs> I've been to places where, I've never been to Russia. Never went I, to Russia. I know some yeah. of our officials have been to Russia. Yeah. But you know what? There are people, there are nice people all over the world. Correct. It's just sometimes it's the government that makes it rough, and you only need one person to lead them in the wrong direction. But I've been to China many times, and I was there with Mike Tyson. After we had a great time, they treated us like champions over there. I yeah. was in Hong Kong when I was in the Navy, and that's one of my favorite places in the whole world that yeah. I've been to. Hong yeah. Kong's a beautiful yeah. city, and the people were so nice there. And it was a huge international city, so it wasn't just Chinese there. The, Brit the British were there, yeah. and Filipino, and Americans, and all that. But, uh, you know, you're right. You're absolutely right, man. we got to figure out a way to come together, yeah. you know. And, you know, getting back to what you said, I mean, we're, we're still in this pandemic, and then you add in this Russia-Ukraine uh, situation going on, which is horrific. This is the time right now, folks listening, to get outside. The weather's going to start warming up. Turn the TV off. Turn your phones off. Go for a walk. Jump rope. Shadow box. Take the kids to school, uh, to the park. Get your kids involved in something. Let's get them off the video games for a little bit. I'm a parent. I've been tired coming home from work from Caesar's Palace and here's some food, fast food, and, you know, go on your video game and let dad relax because I worked in 110 degree weather. But we have to get outside or go to the gym and shut all our electronics off for right. a little bit and decompress and get away from reality for a little bit and get lost in your workouts yeah. and, 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 and let that steam out. Exactly. Jump in the ring here. You can jump in the ring behind <laughs> us. That's a good place to be in. Mm -hmm. Get in that ring, work out a little bit. You know, just stay in shape. But the thing is, is to be focused and what we want to do next. You know, everything got to be positive. You know, because I think that thinking positive and doing the right things, helping other people, which is always my, my way of thinking, helping other people out there. I mean, that's all we got to do. Help your neighbors, love, help your, especially your family, but help your neighbors, your loved ones. You know, get people on the right track because uh, people need some help out there. You know, we've been blessed in, in a lot of different ways that we, we've had pretty good lives. you have been able to travel and do, have a good job and whatever. But the thing is that what do we do, what can we do to help other folks that are not as, as fortunate as we have been? You know, we have to try to guide them and help them. Get them in the gym, you know, help them. Uh, somebody... Call them, call people. I, like, I love calling everybody up. They want, sometimes they wonder why I call so much. I call because I love people, you know? Joe's good at calling and texting. and he's real good at that. So uh, I run across uh, ex-professional boxers all the time, yeah. and we get talking. I was talking with Jerome Coffey uh, yeah, yesterday yes, at the gym, and then uh, Kelvin uh, Seabrooks. And uh, did Kelvin ever call you? I gave him your number. He's supposed to call you. Yeah. Both of them, it was funny. I was talking to Jerome Coffey and then Kelvin Seabrooks, calls up and I'm like, Jerome, Kelvin's on the phone and he goes, I fought him back, you know, 30 or 40 years ago. Yeah, he, so, he was an Olympic champion back in the what, in the 60s? Uh, both of them were in the late 70s, early 80s, and mm -hmm. they missed out on the Olympics, talking about Russia. That was when uh, Jimmy Carter boycotted the 1980 Olympics. Okay. So they missed out on that and then, then both of them uh, turned pro and they fought in the pros. Both of them uh, held the... Uh, Belts. I think Kellen had the uh, IBF belt, and I can't remember what uh, Jerome Coffey. I think he was a one or two-time world champion at a few different weight classes. So, but uh, now they're amateur boxing coaches. Um, Kelvin uh, is in in Charlotte, and uh, Jerome Coffey is in uh, Memphis, Tennessee, where he was born and raised. Right, right. 
So great guys, uh, Jerome will be at the uh, Masters tournament this weekend that yeah. we're having. He's cornering uh, a master boxer. So tell me there. about the, that tournament coming out there this uh, Saturday yeah. and Sunday. Yeah, it's uh, so it's our third annual Las Vegas Masters Boxing Invitational. Um, it's sponsored by uh, Title. It's been huge for the amateur community, and they have another uh, event coming up here in May. Uh, Douglas Ward and the guys at Title do a fantastic job, and we're so grateful and blessed to have them in amateur boxing. But it's this Saturday, Sunday, February 26th and 27th. Um, the weigh-ins uh, are at 9. Uh, the bouts are start at 12. The doors open at 11. Bouts start at 12 noon. Um, we're going to have two rings. It's going to be the biggest Masters tournament ever. We're going to have two rings, and I believe we have over 170 uh, competitors from all over the United States. I believe we do have some from Canada, England, and maybe Germany. Coach Manny Fernandez is the promoter of that, and I think he said Germany, but we have people coming from out of the country. Where, where do you find it being held at? This is gonna be held at the uh, Gil Martinez Mob Boxing or the International Training Center. It's at 7770 Dean Martin um, Drive, and it's uh, Unit 304. It's on the south end of town, right by the Silverton Casino. Here, here in Las Vegas. Here in Las Vegas. Now, it's our third one. You were at our first one. Right. You were uh, presenting belts. Right. Um, I, that was the first time I did your show. You let me promote it. Three, right. It's been three years now. You let me promote it. And I think we even gave you a belt. It's up in your garage. I think we gave you one of the title belts. I saw yeah. it up in your garage. But uh, Joe's been a, a big advocate for amateur boxing for us. And uh, he's really supported, <laughs> he's really supported uh, the Masters division. And the Masters Division is growing. And just real quick on the Masters Division, if everybody's like, what is he talking about Masters Division? Master is a, a Master Division boxer, is a male or a female at the age of 35 years and over and up. Do so I qualify for that? You do qualify. You do qualify. We do have, believe it or not, people in their 60s and 70s. And we got guys in their 70s that have 10, 15, 20 bouts. <laughs> but uh, it's yeah, it's quite a treat to see uh, the seven year olds get in there and, and everybody all eyes are on them and they get the biggest round of applause yeah, by yeah. everybody. But um, yeah, it's good to hear those applause. Yeah, wow. yeah, seventy years old to get in the ring, man. So um, I had my first fight at forty four years old. I'm forty eight mm. now. I had my first amateur bout at yeah. uh, forty four years old at the Westgate Hotel. In front of 2,000 people. You, you got, I guess you got to have good insurance, right? Yeah, yeah, USA Boxing. So, but you know, now even USA Boxing's really the the before the Masters were just maybe you got on one event on a on a on a local card maybe or maybe they had a tournament and they matched a few Masters up. This was 10 years ago, but now we have eight or nine or 10 tournaments a year around the around the uh, US of A, LA, Boston. Uh, Atlanta, Houston a few times, Vegas, and now USA Boxing, um, the, the, the higher ups at USA Boxing are now taking, they see how popular the master division is, and um, not the event coming up in Cleveland, the national event, but at the, I believe at the Junior Olympics uh, this summer in Wichita, Kansas, they tie another tournament to that, and they're going to have the masters come out, and they will start ranking, they have a ranking system now for the masters, so that's how it went from nothing all the way up to getting ranked like the uh, like the, the the young the young people do in the, in the pros. Now, uh, do you uh, consider maybe uh, doing something international like international fights like Canada versus USA or Italy? You know, you, with masters, that would yeah. be that would be something if they can start their own tournaments in their own respective countries to get that going here because I think that would be good to have international bouts. I know, I know I did when I was in the amateurs. Yeah. I was U.S. against Canada. Correct. Different countries. Yeah. Yeah. We do that with the youth a lot. We will have Canada or Ireland or England come over here. Um, with the Masters, we can do it, but it's still growing to the point where you've got to make sure you have enough of Masters from Italy or England or wherever in the United States to, to, to fill an yeah. event up. And you got to be careful because like some uh, countries like Australia – will let their ex-pro fighters still compete in a master's division. No, no, and we no. don't do that here. If you have no. any pro fights at all, whether it's a Muay Thai or a boxing or an MMA, you cannot be an amateur boxer. So, so, so why is it that, that they, they're, they're trying to, are they doing it already? They have professional fighters. They had them this past year, Olympics fighting in the Olympics, fighting yeah. amateur fighters. A couple of our guys that won belts. I, I, I don't agree with that. 
Yeah, there was, I believe, two of our guys that won belts. I can't remember their names. I used to have them down, written down, and, and studied it. But I believe two of our boxers, one won a silver and one won a bronze. I think one gentleman was 4-0 or 5-0, and and I believe the other one was 3-0. So they actually had some professional fights. And I, I, I think the reason behind that, I'm not 100% what I heard, the reason behind that was because COVID and the Olympics got delayed one year. Yeah. I don't know if that's going to be like that moving forward. But, you know, now, I mean, we got to really take this serious, guys, and, and really help promote amateur boxing because yeah. they're talking about maybe boxing not being in the Olympics going forward. Yeah. Well, you know, you got Cuba, and they don't have no professional boxing there. But those fighters out of Cuba, when they do turn pro, when they, they manage to get away from Cuba, they come here to the United States. They are become, they're good champions. They're pro ready. I mean, yeah, they're, they're I mean, pro ready. So, but I mean, I think that uh, that uh, we should you know, work more with the amateur fighters to get them to the level where they can be like professional, but still stay in the amateur if they don't want to go pro. Yeah. Because a lot of a lot of a lot of fighters don't want to go pro. They do it as a hobby. They love it, and they win all these amateur championships. Correct. They enjoy that. Uh -huh. you know, but some people want to go pro because that's where the money's at. Yeah. You know, like Sugar Ray uh, Leonard, and they want to have that name, like Manny Pacquiao, you know, uh, Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson, you know? yeah. I mean, those guys, they would, if they would stay in the amateur, they'd be champions forever. But, you know, they want to move on to the pros. But a lot of, like you said, the, the masters, the seniors, 25 and over, that's something new. And it's something that you have to make sure you're in good physical physical condition in order for you to participate in those type of tournaments. Yeah, sometimes we get uh, master boxers that want to try it, and yeah. that's okay. That's great. You know, you want to prove to yourself. It takes a lot of guts and courage to step between these ropes right here and do that and prove to yourself and prove to your family that you can do it. But uh, a lot of these people take it very, very serious, these competitors. So if you, you know, hit the mitts with your coaches a few times and you're working the heavy bag and jogging, but you're not sparring and not taking it real serious, you can go in there and get hurt. Even though we have 16 ounce gloves and 16 ounce headgear from Tidal, you can go in there and get hurt. So, I mean, it's not a hobby. It's getting out of that stage of a smoker or, or, or whatever. And these people take it very seriously. They train five, six, seven days a week. Their diets are on point. They do a lot of sparring and they take it very serious, so. Yeah. I want you to talk a little bit about your fights are coming up again. Give us a schedule of yeah. the amateur yeah, So I, we talked about the Masters uh, coming up this weekend, Saturday and Sunday, and then after that, our first um, official event for our local boxing community out here, LBC number 49 for the, for the kiddos, the young people, will be at Hall of Fame referee uh, Richard Stills Gym. They'll be the first one to do it this year. Um, they're calling it March Madness. It's a two-day event, Saturday and Sunday, March 19th and 20th. Saturday, Sunday, March 19th and 20th. Um, the bouts start at noon. And um, Richard uh, has a boxing gym and he has a foundation. It's a nonprofit uh, uh, foundation. He also has the Police Athletic League there, the Powell organization there. Mm -hmm. And uh, Richard's address is, uh, he lives on the northwest side of Las Vegas. It's 2475. West Cheyenne Avenue, and it's Suite 110. So that's uh, March 19th and 20th, uh, Saturday, Sunday coming up. Um, they still are pre-matching, so if anybody wants to uh, get a, in contact with me, um, you can reach me on Instagram, West Vegas Vincent. That's West Vegas Vincent, and I will give you the uh, info uh, for the two coaches, Coach Percy Pride and uh, Coach Cisco uh, Cuventus that uh, we'll be uh, doing the matchmaking on, on that. And then we do have uh, a tournament in April, or excuse me, May. We have one uh, coming up in May, and that is the uh, title invitational tournament. That's at the Westgate Hotel, three-day event. They are pre-matching and, and, and taking uh, you know uh, reservations and, and stuff like that right now to compete in that, and that's hold, uh, held by Nate Gould with uh, Real Boxing Gym, and that's Friday, Saturday, Sunday, three-day event, and it's May 13th, 14th, and 15th at the Westgate Casino. So we do have a lot, and there's a few more that are coming up too, so we do have a lot of tournaments coming up, a lot of two-day events coming up, and like I told you when we opened up uh, the show today, we have a lot of activity, so locally, but anybody listening to this that lives in Arizona, Utah, California, Colorado, New Mexico, I don't care, back east, Florida, New York, 
you want to fly out to Las Vegas, we'll get you on one of these events. We'd love to have you out here. We'd be very grateful to have you out here. Well, we're the boxing capital of the world. That's it, I right mean, here. Even if you don't go pro, you can say, you know, I went to Las Vegas. I fought in Las Vegas. That's a good thing to do. Even if you lose, you say, I fought in Las Vegas. Well, the big fights were hell. And that's a good thing to do, you know? It's always a good time to come out to Vegas. The weather's starting to warm up yeah, now. Yeah. Um, like we talked about earlier, we've all kind of been isolated and secluded the last two years. Great time to come out to Las Vegas, support amateur boxing, bring your young amateur boxers out here, bring the family out here, enjoy all the, uh, the sights and scenery out here in Las Vegas, pool yeah. season starting back up. And, uh, you know, now's the time to come out, man. We'd love to have you. Got yeah, a lot of activity. Yeah, you can check out the... the on the schedules for professional boxing. If you, yep. want, if you want to see a boxing match, there may be a boxing match that weekend. Correct. So you know, if you're not doing anything, you can either go to the gym and see these fighters train. You go to Mayweather's boxing gym. You go to the gym where, where the Julio's at. Uh, the pound for pound boxing yeah, gym? Pound, pound for, for pound, pound for pound boxing gym? Any of, the, any of the gym that you want to Absolutely. mention. Absolutely. Richard Steele's boxing club. At Richard Steele's, yeah. You know, go there and watch the fighters train, work out. So there's always a lot you can do. If there's no boxing, fights going on, at least you go to the gym to watch watch the professionals and amateurs. Correct. Uh, you know, work out and see how, how it is here in Las Vegas. Yeah, you know, anytime you, you come to an amateur event and you purchase a ticket to come in and, and, and watch the amateurs uh display their talents. You're supporting the amateur boxing community. And like Joe said, you can always get with me and see what the schedule is. And if you want to time it around, like I know we have Billy Joel this weekend. Uh, the Metallica is coming in. Uh, we have the Las Vegas Gold Knights hockey team, Summer League NBA basketball. We have the NFL draft this year. You can always tie it around other events yeah. out here too. Exactly. If pool season's out here, if you want to come see me at the pool at Caesars Palace, I make a really good mojito out there. <laughs> he's, a blackberry he's, mojito. Yeah, he's, and, a, he's a bartender at Caesars Palace. Yeah, 24 years. 24 years I told, I told, ago. The pool area, right? The pool area. Yeah. You, got, you got the best job in the world. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah. well, you know what, man? I, I, I mean, you see all the all the beautiful girls yeah. in, the, in the bikinis. Yeah. We gotta keep it distant. I gotta work, man. My hands down. I'm making drinks. And, and not I'm only that, drinks. his wife doesn't take any BS. Oh no, man. I married a Hispanic woman, man. I married <laughs> a Mex I'd be getting big time trouble, so I don't do that. So, but no, I've been there 24 years. Great job. Very grateful. It's provided me a great uh, living to, to raise my family. And man, it's just the, all the actions there. You know, it's high mm. intensity. You know, everybody's happy out at the swimming pool. You're not in the casino. You're not back wherever you're from. You know, they come out here in March, April, and May. You know, you're from back east. You're from Manhattan. They come out here, and it's still snowing back there. Yeah. So they come out here, and they're like, oh, my God, this is like the best thing ever in their life. Yeah. Well, you know, when you lived in New York, yeah. and you would come out to Las Vegas right. back when you were still, you know, with the New York, New York Athletic Commission, right. and you would come out to Vegas, and it might be freezing there you're chipping ice off your windshield or shoveling snow and you come out here and it's 75 80 degrees yeah, and bro, i remember one night i came out here before i started refereeing because i was refereeing and judging at the same time one time i came out to vegas they had me uh, judge uh the sugar ray leonard and roberto duran outside outside I, at the mirage uh, Mariah, yeah. it was freezing, freezing outside. i remember that yeah. i remember <laughs> sugar ray leonard his corner man put a blanket over him in between rounds, yeah. Right? When he went back to the corner for the one minute rest period, they wrapped him up in a blanket. I mean, that's how cold yeah, it was. Yeah, that, that was like in November, right? They, they, was, they had a little bit later in the year. Yeah, you it can't. Was cold. It was cold. Yeah, you can't have a fight in November out here. I mean, it still might be nice, but you're you're asking for trouble if yeah, you yeah. have an event. I think yeah. like middle of October, maybe Halloween should be the latest you have an outside <laughs> fight out here. And you don't want one out here in June, July, and August when no, it's uh, I mean, 110 degrees I'm either. Of, well, in, I've, I've done fights. Daytime at Caesars, yeah. uh, where I did uh, my first fight, uh, it was uh, Jeff Fennick and Asuba Nelson. Yeah. It was like 110 degrees. Oh my God. And it was really, and that was outdoors. And I remember one time I did the uh, uh, Bo Holyfield, that was also outdoors at outdoors Caesars. Yeah. Outdoors, yeah. Outdoors. So I mean, it gets to be real hot outdoors. Yeah. But uh, June, July, August, man, those months are hot. Yeah, I'd, rather, I'd rather keep them in the indoors arenas and do it like at the MGM or the. Uh, uh, Thomas and Mac. Yeah, you know, I save all my vacation for June and July and <laughs> August. That's where I go travel around the country yeah. and hit all the amateur events. I, I try to get away from the pool, but yeah. uh, the heat here gets to be a little too much on that. Oh, anyway, guys, we're glad that we that you joined us today for this special event, and uh, glad that we had Jason on the show to tell you a little bit about the up and coming events and this coming uh, Saturday and Sunday, and uh, with the Masters tournament, and uh, it's honored to. 
to always be sharing our knowledge and wisdom with you guys and hope to have a Jason in the near future to talk about more about amateur boxing and you moms and dads out there. God bless you. Take care and keep your guards up at all times. And remember, Jason, Jason, I'm fair, but I'm firm. Yes, you are. Touch man. it, my buddy. Good luck and thank you so much. Take care, guys.